Top 12 Most Popular Dishes Worldwide and Its Origin It's a crazy time for food, you guys. From drinks to desserts, today's food scene is all about experimentation. I mean, we live in a world where things like cronuts and ice cream nachos have become the norm. Needless to say, it can feel like there's a new hybrid something or another on the daily. While these crazy inventions do keep things exciting, there's nothing like the simplicity of the classics. Think hamburgers, buffalo wings, and chocolate chip cookies. While these foods aren't exactly trendy or special, they are super popular. It's also difficult to imagine a world without them. Ketchup, for example, is one of the most frequently consumed condiments in the United States. And if it wasn't for the tomato sauce's conception, American cuisine would look very different. One of the best ways to honor these popular foods is to learn about their origins. Many of these foods stem from unexpected countries and cultures. In other cases, the food was created as a solution to a problem. Regardless, these stories emphasize just how influential food can truly be. So the next time you're enjoying one of these popular foods, take a minute to appreciate their history. They came a long way to reach your plate. Let's take a look at top 12 popular foods around the world and how their origin. Peanut butter Contrary to popular belief, George Washington Carver did not invent peanut butter. He was one of the greatest inventors in American history, discovering over 300 hundred uses for peanuts including chili sauce, shampoo, shaving cream and glue. He was a pioneer in the agricultural world and many refer to him as father of the peanut industry. His innovations also increased the legumes' popularity and made peanuts a staple in the American diet. The earliest reference to peanut butter can be traced back to the ancient Incas and the Aztecs who ground roasted peanuts into a paste. However, modern peanut butter, its process of production and the equipment used to make it, can be credited to at least three inventors. In 1884 Marcellus Gilmore Edson of Canada patented peanut paste, the finished product from milling roasted peanuts between two heated surfaces. In 1895 Drive John Harvey Kellogg, the creator of Kellogg's cereal, patented a process for creating peanut butter from raw peanuts. He marketed it as a nutritious protein substitute for people who could hardly chew on solid food. In 1903, Drive. Ambrose Straub of St. Louis, Missouri, patented a peanut butter-making machine. While George Washington Carver didn't invent peanut butter, his work, along with that of peanut butter innovators Edson, Kellogg and Straub, helped establish peanut butter as the nutritious staple ingredient found in 94% of American households today. Sushi Sushi traces its origins back for millennia, to the rice fields of Asia, China, to be specific. This may be shocking to you, as most people assume that sushi was first created in Japan. However, this is not the case. While Japan is certainly the sushi capital of the world, and responsible for introducing the dish to travelers, sushi traces its origins back to a Chinese dish called narizushi. This dish consisted of fermented rice and salted fish. And, despite what you may think, it wasn't fermented and salted for flavor. The dish's earliest known origin was in the 2nd century BC, so it predates refrigerators by nearly 2,000 years. Because of this, narizushi was actually a very practical dish. The rice was fermented to preserve it, and the fish was also salted heavily to prevent the growth of bacteria and microorganisms, keeping it fresh longer, even when stored without any kind of refrigeration. And, interestingly, the rice was typically thrown out when eating the fish. It was used only to wrap and preserve the fish. The dish spread from China to Japan in the 8th century. The first reference to sushi appeared in the Yoro Code, written in the year 718. Over the following centuries, the dish slowly began to change. The Japanese began eating three meals a day, boiling their rice, and using rice vinegar to help ferment the rice more quickly. The smell of the preserved fish was still strong, but a faster fermentation process helped reduce the time it took to create the Japanese sushi dish. By the middle of the 18th century, sushi spread to Edo, where three famous sushi restaurants, Matsunozushi, Kanukizushi, and Yoheizushi were opened and that's the start when the sushi became popular until now. Cheesecake The first, cheesecake, may have been created on the Greek island of Samos. Physical anthropologists excavated cheese molds there which were dated circa 2000 BC cheese and cheese products had most likely been around for thousands of years before this, but earlier than this goes into prehistory, that period in human history before the invention of writing, so we will never really know. 
In Greece, cheesecake was considered to be a good source of energy, and there is evidence that it was served to athletes during the first Olympic Games in 776 BC. Greek brides and grooms were also known to use cheesecake as a wedding cake. The simple ingredients of flour, wheat, honey and cheese were formed into a cake and baked, a far cry from the more complicated recipes available today. The writer Athenaeus is credited for writing the first Greek cheesecake recipe in 230 AD. By this time, the Greeks had been serving cheesecake for over 2,000 years but this is the oldest known surviving Greek recipe. It was also pretty basic, pound the cheese until it is smooth and pasty, mix the pounded cheese in a brass pan with honey and spring wheat flour, heat the cheesecake, in one mass, allow to cool then serve. When the Romans conquered Greece, the cheesecake recipe was just one spoil of war. They modified it including crushed cheese and eggs. These ingredients were baked under a hot brick and it was served warm. Occasionally, the Romans would put the cheese filling in a pastry. The Romans called their cheesecake, Libuma, and they served it on special occasions. Marcus Cato, a Roman politician in the 1st century BC, is credited as recording the oldest known Roman cheesecake recipe. Fortune cookies Much to most Americans' surprise, the fortune cookie is not a Chinese invention. It is actually an American invention originating in California. There are many theories, and much speculation surrounding the mysterious origin of the fortune cookie, regarding in which city the fortune cookie originated and who invented it Chinese American, Japanese American or 14th century revolutionists there has been much debate. In 1983, there was even a mock trial held in San Francisco's pseudo-legal court of historical review to determine the origins of the fortune cookie. One of the famous legendary history of the fortune cookie is the story about the Chinese immigrant, David Jung, who founded the Hong Kong Noodle Company while living in Los Angeles, invented the cookie in 1918. Concerned about the poor people he saw wandering near his shop, he created the cookie and passed them out free on the streets. Each cookie contained a strip of paper with an inspirational Bible scripture on it, written for Jung by a Presbyterian minister. Regardless of who was the real inventor of fortune cookie we can't deny the fact that it's one of the popularity food in the world. French fries The term French fries which refers to deep fried strips or slices of potato came upon the culinary scene probably sometime in the 1700s. Though potatoes arrived in Europe in the late 1600s they didn't really become accepted as food for a century. There is no absolute proof, but while the French were known to perfect the art of deep fat frying, the Belgians most likely perfected this French fried potato snack. In Europe they were never known as French fries but as pomme de terre frites latter shortened to, pomme frites, and even just, frites. I know from personal experience don't try to tell a Belgian that they didn't invent, pomme frites. They are generally served in, cornets, or cones and catsup is not popular for dipping the standard choice is usually a good mayonnaise. Most of our iconic foods have a folk story of how they were created usually out of necessity or by a blunder the French fry potato has one as well. According to a family manuscript by Joseph Girard, the people of the Meuse Valley near Dinant, Belgium ate a lot of fish as they lived near the river. They loved to fry the fish in hot fat. When the rivers would freeze or when fishing was difficult they came up with the idea of cutting potatoes like small fish and frying them. Another thought by historians is that cutting a food into a long strip while the French called it, julienne, other folks referred to it as, Frenching, and perhaps that is why they were called French fries. Apple pie According to Food 52, apple pie first originated in England, where it arose out of culinary influences from France, the Netherlands, and the Ottoman Empire as early as 1390, centuries before the pilgrims set foot on Plymouth Rock. Eventually apple pie was brought to the colonies by European settlers, where the dish quickly caught on. America's first cookbook, American Cookery by Amelia Simmons, published in 1796, included two recipes for the fruit-based dessert. Easy and affordable, apple pie was in American cuisine by the 18th and 19th centuries. But, as Food 52 reports, it didn't become associated with American cultural identity until the 20th century, when advertising, news, and two world wars transformed the dish into a nationalist symbol. Phony symbolism aside, apple pie actually does represent America, but not for the reasons most people think. Apple pie is American because it represents how cultures from all over the world can join together to create something new and altogether wonderful. Like apples, we're all transplants. Pasta Many school children were taught that the Venetian merchant Marco Polo brought back pasta from his journeys to China, along with gelato, some believed. 
Some may have also learnt that Polos was not a discovery, but rather a rediscovery of a product once popular in Italy among the Etruscans and the Romans. Well, Marco Polo might have done amazing things on his journeys, but bringing pasta to Italy was not one of them, noodles were already there in Polo's time. There is indeed evidence of an Etrusco-Roman noodle made from the same durum wheat used to produce modern pasta, it was called, lagan, origin of the modern word for lasagna. However this type of food, first mentioned in the 1st century AD, was not boiled, as it is usually done today, but oven-baked. Ancient lagan had some similarities with modern pasta, but cannot be considered quite the same. The country will have to wait a few centuries for its most popular dish to make a further culinary leap forward. The modern word, macaroni, derives from the Sicilian term for kneading dough with energy, as early pasta making was often a laborious, day-long process. How these early dishes were served is not truly known, but many Sicilian pasta recipes still include typically Middle Eastern ingredients, such as raisins and cinnamon, which may be witness to original, medieval recipes. By the 1300s dried pasta was very popular for its nutrition and long shelf life, making it ideal for long ship voyages. Pasta made it around the globe during the voyages of discovery a century later. By the time different shapes of pasta have appeared and new technology made pasta easier to make. With these innovations pasta truly became a part of Italian life. However the next big advancement in the history of pasta would not come until the 19th century when pasta met tomatoes. Pizza pizza is a baked pie of Italian origin consisting of a shallow bread-like crust covered with seasoned tomato sauce, cheese, and often other toppings such as sausage or olive. The word pizza is believed to be from an old Italian word meaning, a point, which in turn became the Italian word, pizzicare, which means, to pinch, or, pluck. In one of its many forms, pizza has been a basic part of the Italian diet since the Stone Age. This earliest form of pizza was a crude bread that was baked beneath the stones of the fire. After cooking, it was seasoned with a variety of different toppings and used instead of plates and utensils to sop up broth or gravies. It is said that the idea of using bread as a plate came from the Greeks who ate flat round bread plankentos baked with an assortment of toppings. It was eaten by the working man and his family because it was a thrifty and convenient food. The pizza actually could have been invented by the Phoenicians, the Greeks, Romans, or anyone who learned the secret of mixing flour with water and heating it on a hot stone. Thank you for watching.